In late September, Tesla released Smart Summon, a feature that allowed cars to drive through parking lots and garages without anyone in them. And like any Tesla feature release, user videos immediately flooded the internet. Mostly these Smart Summon videos were successful, and to be honest, pretty amazing. But there were a few videos, like this one, and this one, Oh my God. where Smart Summon didn't quite react in time. So Tesla did what Tesla does best. They collected all the data from over 550,000 Smart Summon attempts, and they released an improved version of the software within a few days. Shortly after, and once the feature was available here in Canada, Tesla announced that they had over a million Smart Summon attempts already made within a few weeks of launch, which is actually more than one Smart Summon attempt per Tesla vehicle on the road today. And while personally I don't feel comfortable using Smart Summon in a mall parking lot full of Christmas shoppers, I've still been learning about it. I've been playing around with the feature and figuring out how it works. And along the way, I bumped into three main questions that I wanted answers to. First, I wanted to know how Smart Summon plans its route. How does it go left or right or decide whether it should go forward or backwards? Does it know if it's on some sort of road? Is it just using camera inputs or is it using a combination of inputs? I wanted to figure out exactly how it moved. Second, I wanted to figure out what kind of obstacles Smart Summon could detect. I mean, obviously it's gonna stop for cars and people, large objects that are pretty easy to identify. But what happens if it's a smaller object? What happens if you're at a mall parking lot and you got a Christmas shopper parked beside you and they leave their shopping cart behind your car? You're trapped on both sides, you can't go back. Is Smart Summon gonna run over the shopping cart? Will it stop? Will you be stuck? And finally, I want to see how my Tesla would react if I gave it a task that it couldn't complete. Imagine I was in a mall and I asked Smart Summon to drive towards my current location. Now if that current location is not at the edge of the parking lot, what will Tesla do? Will it still try and drive up the edge of the sidewalk into the mall? Will it just wait there? Will it not do anything? How is it going to react if I'm not specifically in the parking lot waiting for it to pick me up. So I had all these questions that I wanted answers to. I figured the best way to do it would be to go down to an empty parking lot and run some tests myself. Here's some footage from the other day. All right, test number one. We're gonna see if Tesla's smart summon can go its full range. Tesla says it can go about 200 feet as long as you have good line of sight. So I'm gonna go 200 feet back that way. It's about 65 meters and we're gonna see if we can smart summon. All right, 65 paces away. It's about 200 feet. Let's see what we can do here. So we're there, almost on the edge of the range. Here it comes. Is it complete? Summon complete. All right, smart summon test number two. We're gonna see if the car will follow a path that I give it, even if the path is not on the road. So I'm gonna put my target as the river over there and see if the car will actually continue driving beyond the edge of the road towards the river. Obviously, I'm not gonna let it get into the river, but we're gonna see what the car does. All right, we've set the target to the river, right there, the West Don River, and we're gonna tell the car to go to the target. So the route's changing as it moves. It doesn't really know where it's going. It's coming backwards now. Okay, here we go. It's doing pretty good, but I told it to go over there. Yeah, over over there. <laughs> it recognizes that this is the road. Yeah. And it's gonna continue along the road. It's not gonna turn off into the river. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just smart like that, eh? Along the road, looking for the entrance to the river, and it's not finding it. And it's still not finding, it's still looking for the entrance oh, to the river. Oh, I see what you mean, okay. And it's gonna keep looking, probably until it gets to the edge of its range. My hands are getting cold. <laughs> oh, oh, maximum distance reached. All right. That's it. So no. So you know what? That, didn't that's go good. In the river. That's a good thing. That's a good <laughs> sign. All right, next Tesla smart summon test. We got the car down there. We set up a bunch of pylons all the way through the parking lot and we've got it going straight and then it's gonna curve. And we're gonna try and get the Tesla to come all the way to me. First, see if it hits any of the pylons on the way and then see if it'll follow our course and then come back around to get to us. Oh, it's backing up. It doesn't want to go through our obstacle course. <laughs> oh, it's wow. Obstacle course. It just fully oh, avoided shit. it. Is it going to hit the cone? No, it's not. Wow. It went around the obstacle course. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it fully <laughs> backed out of our course. <laughs> All right, test number four for the Tesla Smart Summon. We've trapped the entire car in pylons. We have like 12 or 13 pylons all around the car. We're gonna see how Tesla reacts to the obstacles. First, if it can see the obstacles, and then if it actually tries to go around them, 
if it tries to run them over. We'll see. It's trying to go forwards. Oh! <laughs> All right, the first time it ran over one of the cones and escaped my trap. Now I have a few more cones and I put them tighter towards the car. Let's see what happens this time. Locked on our target. Trying to go forward. Oh, can't. Try to go backwards. Nope, can't go there. Nope. A few moments later. My Tesla's trapped. <laughs> you got your clickbait right there. <laughs> <laughs> Successfully trapped the Tesla this time. It went back and forth about 15 or 20 times. It couldn't find a way out of the uh, maze and it stopped. So if you want to trap a Tesla on Smart Summon, just get a bunch of pylons and put them around the car. All right, we did two pylon tests. Now we've put smaller objects around the car. We've put red Solo cups filled with snow around the car. They're not very big objects. We'll see if Tesla detects them and then if it decides to run over them in order to get out in Smart Summon. All right, here's the official red Solo cup test. There's the vehicle and here's our target. Oh. It stopped. <laughs> it went right over the cup. <laughs> so after all that testing, here are the three main things I've learned. First, the Tesla is definitely relying on both camera inputs and Google's map interface. When I first asked the Tesla to go down towards the river, you could see it driving along the parking lot looking for an entrance to the river while staying exactly on the line set out by Google Maps. And it only ever strayed from that Google Maps road line whenever an obstacle was in the way. So I may have to do some more testing on this to figure out how it might react on gravel roads or places that Google Maps has not perfectly mapped out yet. The second thing I learned was that my Tesla on Smart Summon can detect some really small objects. I managed to trap it with just a dozen or so pylon cones, most of which were less than a foot in height, and they really had nothing to them. They were hollow inside. And I'm not sure if the Tesla didn't detect my red Solo cups or if it just decided to drive over them, but I think that was probably the right decision. I mean, there's always gonna be this struggle to find a healthy balance of what the Tesla on Smart Summon should stop for and what it should just continue driving through or driving over. There's all sorts of small debris on roads and things like red Solo cups should not be the reason why a driverless car can't get to its destination. But things like construction cones and pylons, maybe they should be. But either way, I'd still like some sort of notification or update if the car does happen to get stuck on Smart Summon. When I had those pylons all around the car, it just kept going a few feet forward, a few feet backward for over a minute without ever letting me know that it was stuck and that I needed to help it. Same thing happened when I sent the car to the river. It never actually arrived at the river, but it also never told me that it couldn't complete the trip. It just kept going until it reached the end of its range and then just stopped in the middle of the parking lot. Some sort of update or some sort of notification in the app would be nice. And the final thing I learned about Smart Summon, probably the coolest thing, is how quickly the car is making decisions. From the app, you can actually see every single time the car changes direction or moves, the route changes as well. It's processing all this new information, all the GPS data, all the camera data, and it's deciding what it should do next. And since all this GPS data and camera data is being recorded and saved, that's what makes Tesla software so powerful. Eventually, all the learnings from my Smart Summon experience will be shared with all the other cars in the Tesla fleet, and all of their experiences and learnings will be shared with me. All these Smart Summon cars are gonna to continue to get better over time. And although Smart Summon is not perfect yet, I think it's an impressive and a necessary step to achieve Tesla's self-driving ambitions. Because from a bird's eye view, Tesla first solved high-speed driving, that was autopilot on highways. Now they've solved slow driving, which is Smart Summon in parking lots, and now they have that gap of everything in between. All the city driving, all the stop and go traffic, all the weird intersections and the turns, that's what's next. And of course that last step is gonna be most difficult of all. There's lots more complexity in city driving than there is on highways or parking lots. But then again, Tesla has been proving everyone wrong for a decade now, and I think the Smart Summon release, the fact that it got out so quickly and they've already updated it and they're gonna to continue to update it, I think that just confirms Tesla's completely serious about doing self-driving cars. Now, for most people, Smart Summon is still kind of a party trick. 
It's something you do once or twice to impress your friends or to show them how your cool car moves on its own. But it's still not useful to the everyday person. You don't rely on it all the time. But that's how autopilot used to be. Three or four years ago, it was just a party trick. It was something you could use on short stretches of highway. It wasn't perfect, but you could use it. And now I'm doing over 90% of my driving on autopilot. That's highways and that's city roads as well. And I think in a few years, I'll look at Smart Summon in the same way. You just come to rely on it as it gets better and better over time. If there's anything else you want to know about how Smart Summon works today, how it might react to certain situations, leave me a comment down below with your questions. I'll go out and make another video. I'll do some more testing and I'll see what happens.